strong jungler, and said they're going to go for the AD carry. Yeah, so like you said already, a little bit of a focus on some of these leaning champions, the Karma and the Varus. Uh, important to note that because Giants have come into this tournament as the highest seeded LCS team, uh, they have side selection of games 1, 3, and 5, and Giants have opted into red side. So let's see how they use their counter picks. Syncrov with a fairly wide jungle pool available, actually all major junglers, uh, decides to lock in the car Zix. Interesting. He's actually yet to play that this season. Uh, typically gone more towards champions like the Lee Sin, where he's actually had a decent performance on in uh, the struggling Origin lineup. But Origin 2, they're playing it fairly safe. Now, if you are Giants, you have a bit of freedom here. You could look to either lock in your jungler and leave a lot of things left available so you can save your mid for the later rotations. Alternatively, you can be pretty confident that the Gragas is going top, so you could look to try and get a more positive matchup in the top half of the map. Maybe a Fizz on this rotation going over towards Flaxish. Instead, they're going to play it safe and simple. Safe, simple, clean, maybe. Uh, Nautilus, point and click. Difficult to uh, mess that one up now, when it comes to the later, the st later stages of the game. As much as I enjoy being polite and courteous to teams, clean is not what I'm expecting from this series. I'll accept that. Um, I will accept that one, <laughs> Medius. And we'll see which team shows up today. I mean, you know, Origin, they got 3 0 um, last week when it came to the first round of the promo tournament. And I'm seeing a little bit of a pivot here in the bands. Nahun has had his Aurelian soul removed. Like, he hovered it. I saw the hover. And then there's obviously a lot of respect, so it's definitely a target ban towards Nahun, but usually Aurelian soul is more, at the moment in his current state, is better picked into certain matchups rather than just someone you can necessarily bind. Pick. And what does that mean then? What would Knight be considering playing if he is banning away an A soul, you know? It would be something like an Orianna. Uh, we saw Huki play uh, in the CLG FlyQuest playoffs matchup. Uh, generally, uh, low mobility control mages are what Aurelian Soul typically does well into because it's really difficult for them to close the gap onto him and he can just force a lot of pressure during the early laning phase where their wave clear isn't the strongest. So those slow ramping teamfight control mages, it's typically where uh, Aurelian Soul excels. All right, so unfortunately he's going to be taken away and there we go. Low mobility control mage, Anivia taken off the table. Nahun actually hovered that a bunch of times towards the end of the split, and we actually saw, uh, actually did see Anivia locked in, I can't recall who played it though, but regardless. Memento it was uh, night, I believe. Was it night, there we go. Um, not in Nahun's hands just yet. Uh, what do we need to see locked in? A mid laner and an ADC for Origin, and for Giants, they need to lock out there's two solo lanes. So many mid lanes have been banned except for Orianna. And my, yeah. my head is just saying, just lock in your Orianna now. I think that you can be pretty safe. You'd have a strong mid lane presence. Very few answers available to it. Uh, throughout the regular season, we have seen Knight bring it out one time. Um, I guess they're just trying to guarantee Knight gets himself a counter pick, but I do think it's a risk because now Nathan, he should be able to just pick up the Orianna for himself. Okay, it was safe and give him a lot of options, right? Because uh, that Orianna, so it goes even in the landing phase. It, it very rarely loses. Has got some scaling on his side. Yep. For Tabs, we know he's going up into the Varus Karma. We know Tabs likes his Ezreal, has played it a whole bunch this split. This will be the seventh time he's uh, going to be able to play that Ezreal. I'm happy that the cannon was not locked in. Not gonna, <laughs> not gonna play it like last week. Didn't have the same level of impact and. With Oriana likely to be the lock here for Nahun, what is the option for Knight, a man who has run counter picks in the past? Uh, and he has the option to go for something like an Azir. Usually does okay during the laning phase against Oriana and will scale nicely into a pick sort of poke composition coming out from Giants. Very good at being able to set up sieges. Victor would just be another one which is very safe, but I feel like it's a move away from the style that Knight has succeeded so much more in the past, which is very much that he is a playmaker, he is someone that you watch when you're when you're in dire straits, when you're in that situation, you need someone to make a play. Knight in the past is always that guy for me that could do it. Um, and I feel like on Victor, he can't really. Yeah, less, less of a playmaker, but more of a team player. Maybe Giants have gone back to the drawing board after the defeat in round one of the promo tournament last week. And Gonna have to reevaluate their approach, but you know what I see, Vadius? What do you see? Trevor? I see two very similar team compositions. You know, they've got some good tanks, they've got good wave clear. They have the option to set up great plays, maybe with a flank or 
Well, maybe with the flank. Um, <laughs> but you know what I also see? Two team comps that can turtle and that can defend. Oh, I mean, I'm expecting a long game, Trevor. Like, both these teams have very long games. Uh, when when Origin took a game off Giants, when they faced in the cross-group play, it took a little over 50 minutes. 50 minutes? Yes, a little over 50 minutes. That's what Origin needed, and you know, Origin's very few amount of wins. It has dragged out. I mean, the 75-minute epic against Rocket, for example. That was quite the epic. It was. No, it really was. And there was a lot of the line in that game. And while I am saying this a little bit tongue-in-cheek, a little bit sarcastic, these teams are fighting for their lives. And that is potentially why you've got a very safe, fairly well-rounded team composition on both sides of the rift. And the thing, the thing for me, though, is that when you compare these two teams, very much so that throughout the split, we've not seen a huge amount of teamwork. We've seen a lot of individual prowess. So I'm looking for, in this first game, who are going to be the players to step up. Well, we heard the analyst desk, and specifically Crepo, talking about Memento and how Memento is one of the guys to watch on Giants. For the first time in five games, he's not playing Graves, and he's got his hands on Lee Sin. If there was somebody on the Giants squad to make an impact, as Crepo has said multiple times today, it's going to be Memento. It's going to be on this least sin. It was Crepo that said it, right? It was. It yeah. absolutely was. Just wanted to I can't go. remember that other guy that was there. Who? Uh, not Dracos. Uh, is there another guy? Yeah, the one with the crappy hairstyle. The, oh, the other two were, were pretty um, good. As you can tell, ladies and gentlemen, we have a little bit of an in-joke going <laughs> um, today. So let's start with early game, uh, because that's going to be super important. Something that we saw earlier on in the day was that the early game decided a lot. Uh, pushing lanes seemed to be a big discussion point among casters and analysts. And when we look at these pushing lanes, it seems that Origin actually have a decent advantage in the early game. It's going to be interesting because you have the Orianna naturally gets a pretty solid push against the Victor early on. Ezreal and Lulu trade very effectively at these very early levels, enabling them to be able to net some good pushing advantages. And Satorius on the Gragas, it's a bit back and forth with the two tanks. You can't necessarily say one pushes much harder because they both have a lot of wave clear. Yeah. But I'm looking at Origin primarily in the very early first few levels for Synchrov to try and get a few couple of games off. Okay, so Syncroft early levels. Let's pay attention. I'm looking at the summoner spells across the board. Nehun has gone for Heal Flash, whereas on the supports, you've got an Ignite versus Exhaust. So I quite like that against some of the uh, shock, uh, burst damage, rather, that can come down from a shockwave or Syncroft's car Zix. It gives you a lot more laning power in the bottom lane to the, uh, the Ignite onto Peke. Uh, I think that it works well with Lulu, especially when you pair it up with the Ezreal. So I think this translates nicely to what we were talking about earlier on where they are looking to try and trade a lot more during the laning phase build up their advantages through just through fighting basically yeah. well that's exciting i like seeing fighting and uh, both of these team comps have plenty of fighting power plus some shields and some life-saving ability so it could get very very explosive and i think that could play into giant's favor even though this team comp isn't necessarily the style we saw them be super successful with as a team they've shown Slightly better team fighting, more consistently, higher individual level plays and performances most of the split. They have. Uh, and even though Giants themselves have gotten very few uh, series wins, uh, they have demonstrated signs of brilliance very early on in the split. I think back to the time in which they were able to take a couple games off Misfits. They could take yep. off Fnatic. Uh, they were looking okay against G2, and we thought, hey, maybe this Giant squad early on. They seem pretty reliably the fourth place team, but the, one of the big narratives that we looked at was that how much has this team actually grown? And when you compare them to a team like Rocket, it's very evident to see the differences. Rocket going from what was nothing into taking down G2 into Giants who have pretty much stayed the same yeah. throughout the regular season. I think that's the most important thing, right? Is that, you know, Giants, yes, they had an incredibly unfortunate remake against Vitality. And that really put them on tilt. Now let's see if Synchrov will be put on tilt. The momentum and Flaxage come over the wall. They manage to get the stun and they trade flashes two for one. Probably not worth, especially if Flaxish gets ganked by Synchrov's uh, Kha'Zix. But they do force Synchrov back. They committed a little hard to try and get themselves that early kill, which, as you rightly said, could come uh, to bite them back later on. But it will now relieve a lot of pressure for the bottom lane, because one of the advantages that you have on the Ezreal Lulu as well, they do trade well. They rely on the presence of having that early game jungle power of the Kha'Zix. And 
With him now out of the picture, he, Q, and Hustling can just feel free to push as much as they like. They have so much wave clear. They can say, we don't care if we want to trade. You can't trade into all of these minions. We're just going to keep pushing and pushing, and we should be fairly safe. Yeah, that's at least, uh, as you mentioned, open up opportunities. And that's actually pretty important because Tabs and Pekka, as the weeks have rolled on, um, they have looked slightly better, you know, and, and they were growing. One of the big reasons that helped them out, they had the uh, emergency call help button being Satori's teleport. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, it, it didn't result in anything, right? It was like one of those flash in the pan moments where you see it once or twice over the last few weeks of the split. And you mentioned how Giants kind of stagnated. Origin, pretty much the same. Um, unfortunately, the general level was, was a lot lower, and that's why both of these teams are in the promotion tournament in the loser's bracket right now, fighting for their lives. But that's also why I have mixed feelings about the series, is it could be Ooh. super exciting, because you've got two teams that have failed to grow, and so they could just throw everything at one another, or because they're both so afraid to try and make plays, to try and risk anything, to gamble, they might take it super slowly, they might be really reserved, and I think that's not the play style that they need to go for. You need to be... You need to be willing to take these risks. We saw it earlier today, picking Katarina in a game five against Fnatic Academy because Koski was confident that he could do it. I want to be seeing that from these two teams. I want to see that that risky play, that possibility that could go wrong, but could also go so, so right. Yeah, that's it. A little bit of risk can bring a lot of reward. For either Origin or Giants, they need to have two series victories to make it back into the LCS. Nahum's going to take it. Auto attack that's been empowered as Knight continues to, you know, siphon some power, push the wave out with that death ray, even as far as CS concerned across the map. Small advantage for Sartorius thanks to uh, that invade, that flax issue memento used a little bit earlier this game. No risky plays, no, no deviation from what we would expect with these champions um, in the opening game of the series. Nope. Very, very standard. Um. I thought that there was the possibility of us seeing a little bit more jungle present, uh, but for the time being, other than that early gank from Memento, we have seen very little, and this is the nature of farm lanes. It is, Quick it shot. is, it is the nature of farm lanes, and um, the high pressure situation tends to give you a slow pace. Yep. But one thing that does bode well for Giants as an organization, um, the last few times they've appeared in the summer promotion tournament, when they haven't done well in spring and they want to re-qualify for summer, naming yep. conventions, please. Um, they've actually won. But this time around, it's it's a little scarier. Well, because I, I remember back when they actually played up against Splice and they ended up losing a very close series against Splice. And then they went up against, I believe it was Huma, yes. who they then had an extremely close series against Huma as well. And so I feel like Giants are the sort of team that come playoffs like to play with your emotions. Oh, yes. And by playoffs, you mean promotion tournament too. x is going to get jumped on here by Memento. He gets turned into a little munchkin before he needs to swim his way away. It's a tiny little whale with that skin. Um, no real support from the rest of Giants, though. So just some poke and some vision that's being set up. I'm looking at the minimap. A couple of wards around this Brambleback. So Giants are going to be fully aware of Synchrov's current power level. So Giants potentially looking towards that early dragon. Uh, with this deep vision investment towards the bottom half of Origin's map, it does mean that it, it's an indicator of Giants' intentions. And the fact that they have been able to get this deep vision down will give you a lot of knowledge as to where Synchrov is when he's in the top half of the map. That means that you can look to try and set up a play on the bottom side. And for the time being, with Memento being towards his red buff, it looks like that Satorius wants to get some vision himself. All right, let's see if uh, Satorius can make his way out. He placed that ward by the Krugs. There's support from Knight and Memento coming up the river. The barrel's going to send Flaxish away. Satorius caught up by the depth charge, but trading an ultimate for a flash. Very, very welcoming to the Giants members. Oh, and even though Flaxish lost his flash earlier, uh, there was no pressure from Origin, so nothing to be gained. Yep. Origin, uh, good communication. Good to, to let Satorius know, hey, there's a good chance the Giants are roaming up through the river because they actually had no vision of that play happening. Uh, but regardless, Satorius had the awareness to be like, right, I need to ult, I need to flash, I have to get out of here as quickly as possible, otherwise I'm very likely going to lose my life. So yes. after the invade, he does get one ward down onto uh, the Krugs. 
But remember that after all that vision that Giants invested into the bottom half of the map, that meant the Origin spent all of their resources trying to clear that out. So they actually left their top side vulnerable, which meant to use as a window to then rotate it and steal away that playback. Oh, very clever uh, map play then from Memento. Reading the situation and, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the wards. One of the stories that we had for Origin Giants, Rocket and Vitality throughout a lot of the split was how the bottom four teams in LCS actually placed more wards on average and control wards um, than all the other teams. And we'll expand on that in a few minutes because Mementos brought people to a Nahun party. Flash for flash, Nahun gets Ooh. sent sideways. Memento unable to connect with the Q. Maybe a bit of nerves there. Uh, that was a straight line skill shot that Memento didn't miss. It was a good flash from Nehun uh, to be able to not get kicked underneath this turret. But regardless, two uh, summoner spells burn in the exchange. Yeah, and of course, uh, Memento was the guy I was hyping up about making plays. Uh, his, I mean, he's his, trying, right? He's yes, trying. Yes. There'll be many more opportunities. We look at the likes of uh, Orion in this landing phase. I mean, we're 10 minutes in. No tower is under any real pressure right now. Giants are going to take an uncontested dragon because they have opted not to recall. And you can see by Tabs' recall timing, there's no challenge from Origin's bottom lane. So easy Drake secured here by Giants. This is the kind of game where, you know, have you ever just put rain music on when you're trying to chill out, where it's just the sound of rain tapping on the window? I don't, because I, I know it calms people down, but it really makes me need the toilet. <laughs> like, I really need to wee when I listen to rain like that. And same with, like, a waterfall and, and, and fountains and stuff like that. Well, then perhaps you could do what I was about to suggest, which is just have this game on in the background, just quiet, soothing, you know, just the falling of minions, the, the quiet pings of enemy locations. It's very soothing, very relaxing. It can be. Shall we listen to the game sounds? Let's listen. Of Summoner's Rift. That is a body slam. Here comes Flaxy. She's in trouble. Satorius and Synchro going under the tower. Is this a reply? First oh! blood. Synchro is blocked. Cancels the auto. And Flaxish gets first blood. The 2v1 outplay for Flaxish. An origin. They go for the dive. It was greedy. You tried to dive a Nautilus. He gets the reset on his passive every time he hits a new target. And the fact that Synchro gets stunned up level 7 underneath the turrets. That was very unfortunate for Origin. It really is. The 2v2 did not work out. Sartorius may not be done just yet. Remember, Gragas and his kit does a lot of damage. There's also a true shot barrage from Tabs available. It's It's been flung. It's been fired. I don't think it's going to connect with Flaxish, though. Whoa. We are following it. No, that was close, actually. Flaxish may have walked into it. Regardless, Sartorius decides not to re-engage. And Flaxish with a fantastic 1v2 outplay. Uh, definitely was good from Flaxish. Good awareness, holding on to his flash till just the right moment. We can better break it down when we get the full replay up, but think about what that means for Flaxish. Now, he should have a little bit more push-up in the top lane, and you can see Origin wanted to try and make something happen. Both level 8, really good ultimate from Satorius, but he takes too much damage from the turret himself. And the ultimate knockup onto Synchroff is really what bought enough time for Flaxish to reposition, then land that crucial stun onto Synchroff underneath the target, uh, underneath the turret, and then move around the turret being like, no, 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 no. you cannot reach me from here, friend. Is that, is that what he was saying? That's, that's exactly <laughs> what he was saying. Okay. Not today, friend. Not today. <laughs> I'm not your friend, guy. And that's how Flax has yelled, taking down uh, Synchro underneath the tower. So first blood to Giants. Good outplay from Giants. It, it's a little frustrating seeing Satorius and Synchro not pull that one off. Um, and it is, it is a problem that, you know, has plagued Origin throughout the split. And I take a look down the items with the kill. Uh, Flax is able to complete his Merc Treads, he's got those Doran Rings, it's it's mirrored by Sartorius, but he's already got the Cowl up. Now, I call this the Lord of the Rings build. Deficio got very upset because... Uh, it's well, I call it the Frodo build uh, because, right, he carries the one ring to rule them all. But then Deficio says, but he's got three rings, Vedius, how does that make any sense? And then Crepo came in with a valuable point, decoys. You have to have baits in there to draw attention from the core ring. That's the point, that's why it's the Frodo build. <laughs> and he will sell the others in order to turn the Almighty One into the greatest ring of them all. All right, I'm gonna wait for that moment before <laughs> I carry on with this version um, of the Quadrilogy, I suppose, as we've added an extra episode to the existing few. And Giants, they've got a very minor lead, thanks to that first blood, but again, still very even. Towers haven't fallen yet, nobody's done any of those lane swap shenanigans to apply pressure to the towers. and. Every time I look at the map, 
it just feels like Giants with Memento are trying to do a little bit more. You know, they've gone into the jungle a couple times. Hustling came into poke. You see the mini map again. Giants have got better deep vision. You hit the nail on the head, Trevor. What we're seeing from Memento is he's going into the enemy jungle a few times. When have we seen Synchrov, even remotely, try and gain any semblance of control over Giants' jungle? Because at the moment, it is purely Giants' game. And even though the gold is very even, look, bottom lane, constantly getting pushed in. Uh, the Ezreal Lulu always looking to try and get a good early few trades in the early levels. They weren't able to. Their jungler, he got spotted out very early on, forced back. Giants' bottom lane used that to just keep pushing, keep pushing. And now they're in a point where it's just wave clear, wave clear, wave clear. And Giants are investing all of their vision into the bottom half of Origin's jungle to allow this push to continue so that they'll eventually take this turret down. I mean, you talked about the pushing lanes. Knight, for a few levels, has already been able to kind of deal with those waves incredibly thick effectively. Um, got those Lucy boots and a perfect hex core, so there's no way that Nahum's going to be able to push him in. And he, Q, and Hustland, they've just chipped away, chipped away. It's about 15 minutes in. A couple more waves like this, and first Tower Blight will be secured by Giants. They will. And then they just move their bottom lane up to the top lane. They rinse and repeat. And Origin will be forced to match them, and the same thing will happen over and over again. Remember, the dragon was already taken early on, and with it respawning soon, Giants could look to take this tower and transition into a, a second dragon. And one of my favorite things, it's an infernal drake. That's a dragon worth fighting over. Oh, yes. So Origin, don't give that one up for free. Um, cannon minion wave is cleared out under the tower. Hiku, Hiku's sitting on 2,200 gold. Tabs is sitting on 2,000. You have to feel that with this recall, PQ and Hustlin will likely just knock the tower over, then go back. Um, there's no resistance. Origin sacrificed the tower. I mean, it was a, it, it, an inevitability. Yep. And that was going to knock over. First blood, first dragon, first tower. Maybe that means first game win for Giants. They've got all. Perhaps. They've got the three: the Illuminati, the Triangle, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is how they won, uh, or they did so well during the regular season of summer. Um, what I wanted to see from Origin was. Like, they had Orianna early on, before the victor is able to get himself a push. That is where you're vulnerable to Orianna just constantly pushing in that wave. And with Synchroff, I would have liked to see them gain vision and look to try and roam bottom lane. Right now, without any real control, they're looking to try and get themselves in the Inferno. They are, and you see all the vision set up. Origin agreed with my analysis of Infernal Dragon being worthwhile to fight over. Uh, but they're not going to. <laughs> Memento and Hustlin. Basically walk up uncontested. Teleports are available. Where are the top laners? They're deciding not to come in yet. Infernal Dragon is the focus of Memento. Well, a Chains of Corruption catch Synchrov and spread. Shockwave only gets Memento. And Origin have their first kill of the game. The Dragon goes to Giants, so you have to feel eventual net worth more beneficial for Giants. It will, in the long run, benefit Giants. However, I feel that... We have to highlight a bit of a greedy play from Memento, trying to not only get himself the Dragon, and then try and force a play as well. Perhaps a little bit overzealous, just take the advantage that you gained, just then look to try and reset your waves. And now with Synchroff moving towards the bottom lane with no jungle support, perhaps Origin can look to capitalize. Yeah, and one of the things that we haven't really highlighted, Vedius, was Origin's team composition, their initiation is very sort of skill shot or flank reliant. And I want to expand to that in a moment or two. Here's the dragon fight we just watched. Uh, with Highline, the ultimate from Peki prevents Synchroff from being kicked in. That means he doesn't actually have to use his flash to get out of that exchange. And because of the knockup tied with the ultimate from Orianna as well, it becomes difficult for Memento to be able to get out of that situation. So just a bit of an overzealous play from Memento, very similar to what we saw when he found Synchroff in the jungle in the early level. I want to go back to that little, you know, comment from a moment ago. If I look at Giants, the, you know, Nautilus engage, point and click ulti. Uh, Lee Sin for some potential flanks. Hell, you've even got some CC that can spread from their AD carry. Origin, on the other hand, very reliant on kind of, you know, skill shot, body slam barrel from Sartorius or a flank. And, and then not a lot, a lot else. So it, it feels like there's a lot of complexity to starting a fight if you're Origin. However, they have a lot of good disengage tools. So while Giants may very well have a number of means to start the fight, Origin have a lot of ways to stop it. Okay. Or at the very least, split Giants up. The, the use of the Orianna ball can be massive in these team fights. Just its positioning and holding onto the ultimate can be enough to force Giants to split up so that Origin can then look to focus their front line. They have a, a nice slow composition to play. When I think of this comp and the way in which they play fights, it's always very much, you want to be playing the fight slowly, you want to be kiting back, gradually, slowly chip them down. It's not the sort of team fighting where you go 
throw all the buttons all the once at the same time. That's a little bit more like Giant's composition. Uh, whereas Origin requires more finesse, more calmness, more let's take our time and eventually we'll be able to draw this fight to a win. More complexity. Uh, good summary there. Let's see if Origin can pull it off. I like what you said. More buttons, more onceness. You know, just throw it at them, Giants. Well, it's literally like ult from Varus, ult from Victor, and then you win, right? <laughs> uh, if you want to add flash, you kick, have memento, kick everyone through each other too. Bowling pill, bowling pin imagine style. Imagine that, right? Oh, imagine, right? You kick, right? So you ulti with Flaxish onto Peke. You then kick Peke through the enemy team into multi knocker. Well, that's the dream. Very good defensive flash by Knight and Ghost. All that cost was a body slam from Sartorius. So Knight, summon a spell list for the next few minutes. We're getting to 20 minutes on the game clock of game one here. It is do or die for Origin and Giants. And Giants, 1,000 gold up. You know, they've. They haven't made, uh, neither team has made like really big plays. Nope. But Flaxis just had a great outplay earlier to allow him to get that uh, solo kill. I wonder if that hit the confidence of OG. Uh, we have to remember that throughout the regular season, these guys are yet to pick up a series win. They've gotten a few game wins here and there. Uh, but when you start off the best of five by going through a, a tower dive and then dying, it makes you wonder, hmm, is that going to hurt your ability or willingness to keep trying to make these plays? I don't have the answer to that, um, and, and, and it's difficult because, as a team, they have just been bullied and, and beaten up all split long. Memento finds Synchrov just walking into his jungle, gets a combo down, and, and Synchrov loses half of his hit points. I'm looking at itemization. Got that Phage after Warrior Enchant. Memento going a little bit more tanky as Giants have grouped up. And we've seen the AD carry and support swapping. Here, here. It's caught out by a lot of damage from Hiku, but there was no other support. Giants seemed a little bit like different pages there. It felt like Memento and Huston were backing out. Hiku was going in. And that allows Expected to escape just with that wild growth. What this will result in, though, is another tower uh, for Giants. Because notice the Victor, he's pushed in mid. Uh, Giants, both with Memento and Huston, are looking to push up their vision. They're forcing Ezreal away from the tower. They've already forced Peke back. And now with three members, possibly four, depending on whether or not Might comes over, Giants looking to ascertain more control over the map. They are indeed. Synchro gets caught out by the Sonic Wave. A lot of damage from Memento. He's looking for the solo kill. We'll have some support by the heal and the shield, rather, from Memento. And that's going to allow Giants to get away. They're still focusing down the tower. But I want to go back to that uh, confidence point that you talked about, Vedius, because Origin have had the single worst performance of any European team in the LCS since its inception. Two wins and 26 losses. It's a 7% win ratio. You know, Giants themselves, when they were in spring in 2013, they had eight wins to 20 losses. Uh, Dragonborns, who finished uh, eighth that split when it was an eight-team league, they went six and 22. Like, unfortunately for Origin, they, they broke a lot of very negative records this split. Uh, the problem that Origin has is you're now in an era of League of Legends where the standard to be good at an LCS is so much higher compared to what it needs to be. And when you are effectively a team full of challenger players prior to Peke coming in, Ooh. you are going to have difficulty yep. going up against what is uh, not only uh, an LCS full of a lot of new talent, but also a lot of veteran talent as well. And uh, we think back to players like Nehun, who is yet to get himself a win over in the Challenger, LSPL, Satorius, who spent a lot of time in Challenger, Synchroff, who is still relatively new to the LCS stage. It's it's very difficult for Origin to really find that success, all that growth throughout yep. the season. It really, really is, and, and you know, not really set up for success uh, in terms of the, the, the roster that was drafted. Um, that little engage by Giants that we nonchalantly disregarded, uh, Hiku flashed for that. Like, he went for the flash Varus ultimate. Varus might be... His ulti might be the most missed skill shot on the professional stage. I think there could be an argument to be made. I'm not going to claim Ash that it arrows, is. Ash arrows, Varus ulties, Ezreal yeah. ulties. They're all definitely up there. Eden carries right now. All right. Memento. Memento gets sent into the pit. A lot of damage, and he's instantly killed. Knight wants to try to get a reply back. The Chaos Storm is chasing. Memento really just got obliterated 
find the Origin squad and Origin get the dragon. I mean, that's going to even this game out a little. Very good setup from Origin. The fact that Satorius went for the flash body slam into an ulti, into a whimsy, so the Memento couldn't get out either. And then Sinkoff, he just gets the dragon. He's like, oh, you've just delivered a free leaf sin for me. Wonderful. I will take that. And then they wander off into the sunset. So Origin, they pick themselves up the dragon, they pick themselves up a kill. And Giants, not really ready for the play. They'd already used their flashes, their ultimates earlier on, in order to try and force that fight in the top river. And you can see this in Memento being like, hey, we have more control over the map. We feel more confident uh, that I can just walk up and contest this. And he doesn't show enough respect to Origin, but very quickly bite to it. Yeah, very quickly. And they get the kill. Origin. They've got they've got some life in them. 25 minutes in, um, Ocean Drake is going to help out against some of the poke. And if you look at the item spikes, you're going two, three items pretty much across the board. Your nonsense story about Lord of the Rings is not true yet, as both top laners still have well, three still decoys. The rings. You're still trying to figure out which one is the true ring. Yeah, well, while well, I'm trying to figure that out, Giants and Origin are trying to figure out how to take a lead. We're officially into mid game. I think we've been in mid game for a little while. It was yeah, pretty... Two items is the, the best indicator it's, of it's, mid game. It was obvious we're going that way. Yep. Various. Which team comp do you like more as we continue to scale towards, uh, let's say, 55 minute game one? I think that's a safe bet. <laughs> uh, it depends in what you mean by more. I okay. think because both have uh, very obvious strengths. I prefer Giants' composition in the sense that it's easy to play, more straightforward. Good team fighting, right? So that net ob the next objective is very much let's gain control of the Baron, let's try and make something happen. And right now, you can already see a lot of vision being set up. They find Sinkoff out of position. They might kill him. Well, they're going to try to. He's able to flash over the wall. Chains of corruption and a chaos storm was used, but Sinkoff is able to survive with his life. And Giants, they're trying to set up vision, as you mentioned. So this is very much what Giants want to be doing. Whereas OG, as we discussed earlier, it's much more more about playing that slow style of let's get a bit of chip damage with the Ezreal. Let's try and set off a flank with Synchroff and Sartorius. It's very much about positioning and making sure that as the enemy is trying to set up for something, that is when you look to punish them. And the issue for Origin is so far, the only time we've seen them make a play and it succeed is when they're reacting to Giants overstepping, when they're reacting to Giants making that small mistake. And so what they need is to punish Giants as they're setting up this vision, as they're trying to gain control. Because while as a five-man unit, Giants are strong, on an individual level, in terms of the champions, Origin should have the advantage. Okay, interesting. So context of the late-game shenanigans. The context of those shenanigans will then impact whose scaling we prefer. And as it stands, Giants are going to brute force their way onto this mid-outer tower. Origin, they are here to defend. Arguably a little bit late, though, and they lose a lot of HP off that tower. Sartorius was making his way up from the red buff side of Origin's jungle, and Giants back away safely. So it's still a thousand gold game. Very, very close as Giants are going to peel away and maybe play a little bit of the Baron baits. Want to highlight something for any aspiring Victor players out there? Uh, something that Knight does actually a really good job of as uh, the ultimate comes out. All right, Chain of Corruption is going to sprint. Mm. Nahun gets caught out. Shockwave, simply not enough damage. That's a kick onto Tab, sending him away from the tower. And Xpeke is dropped low by the Siphon Power. Satorius has got a Body Slam and the Barrel available. But Origin and a four-man defense. Can they hold this outer tower? I don't think that they can if Giants stick around. Origin, they find the pick. Now Memento, again, trying to gain control over the top half of Origin's jungle. They're just trying to force Origin off this tower, which they should very easily be able to do. Hiku has been the primary initiator for Giants time and time again. He finds the ultimate onto Nehu. He can't even flash. He wanted to try and catch EQ off, trade ultimate for ultimate. Maybe he could just nuke EQ down. Bear in mind, he is a level 16 Oriana, but the immediate follow up for Knight. This is what I wanted to highlight earlier on. His use of the gravity field when playing around these turrets is spectacular. Uh, the fact is, every time he's walking close to that tower, he's always throwing it down because of the amount of control and CC that it provides. And that prevented Nehu from being able to escape with the rest of his team following it. Talked about uh, not escaping. Origin are trying to catch someone out in the Giants jungle. Um, realizing Giants are going to be backing, I really like this play. Peke, Satorius, Synchrov using a numbers advantage to get very safe warding in. Memento's going to knock himself into the Baron pit. That means Tabs is in trouble. Here comes Satorius. Origin, have they bitten off more than they can chew? That's a kill. Xpec is already down. Redemption comes out as Giants are chasing Synchrov and Satorius. That leap forward in the body slam means Chain of Corruption's misses, and uh, Origin, I think, good in theory, poor in execution. 
Well, it was a very good executed kick for Memento, hitting three members, nicely setting up four Giants to be able to win themselves out on that fight. But the question is, what sort of control can they get off this? They've already taken all of the Tier 1 towers, now they're looking for a kill onto Satorius. All uh, right, optimistic, yeah, optimistic ultimate. It's a zoning ultimate, <laughs> sending Satorius away. Um, 30 seconds until Ocean Drake spawns back up. I'm looking at Vision and Waves. Top wave pushing towards Origin, so Giants have some time to play with. And the red buff was picked up by Synchrov. While the rest of Origin go deal with these side lanes. I mean, Giants, it's 30 minutes in. It's a 3,000 gold lead. And potentially another dragon. Although, it doesn't look like they're going to stick around to pick this one up. Instead, Origin could rush it down if they wanted to. It should definitely be a dragon in favor of Giants. The fact that uh, Oriana's going down to the bottom lane. But we don't have time for that. We've got to look at the replay. Look at this. You can see Nehu, and he tries to land the ultimate. Gets hooked up by Flaxish. Good. Good setup from Giants. Great communication that you can see between the team. They know exactly what they want to do. They they catch a target out of position and all of them follow up. Uh, good to see this sort of teamwork happening from the lineup. We want Memento. He now is getting caught out in his own jungle. Good use of the blast cone. And this is where you can see the teamwork once again coming out from Giants. The kick. No gravity fields coming out from the victor. Unfortunately, all of the targets got kicked a little bit too far away. But, oh, we got another fight. We do indeed. That's a kill onto Hustlin. Origin, they get their fourth of the fight. They're not done yet. Memento is dropped as well. And now Origin turn their attention to Baron. I didn't see the setup for that, but they catch Giants out. And now a three-man Giant have to somehow stop Baron. Giants, right now, they do not have their jungler. Can they stop Origin from taking the Baron? Let's find out. Baron is going to go very low. Knight and Hikyu going to look for a steal attempt. Piercing arrow, not even going to get charged yet. Baron is secured. Origin, they pull it back in the 30th minute. We've talked a lot about Giants and Memento in particular being overzealous. And he was one of the members that ended up getting caught out for Giants. I was just praising them for their communication and teamwork and the fact that they were all working together to be able to punish the mistakes of Origin. But it was this time that Origin find themselves the punish. Origin get themselves the Baron. And all of a sudden, it is Origin with the gold lead over Giants. What a swing. That passive play from Giants ends up backfiring. I wonder if, um, if we can't get a, a replay on broadcast. Maybe Analysis can explain how Memento and Hustlin just got caught out. Because we were in a replay at the time. So we'll have to find out. Ah, replay. Let's so we see, can let's see. see. Memento, they look for a pick onto Satorius here. They're actually just trying to get some vision down in Satorius. They have no idea that he's in the brush. Really good pick from Origin. The fact that they were able to find that just lying in wait. But this was something that we were discussing earlier on. Origin's team composition is all about punishing Giants in the setup rather than once they've already gotten themselves the control. And the fact that Origin were able to find that pick, that's just gotten them the ban. That's just gotten them a goal lead in a game where Giants looked to be maintaining control throughout. Can Origin use this Baron to get map control? They've got two towers already. The Baron power play is already going to swing in their favor thanks to the gold. And Giants, they want to initiate. Point and click. There's the dredge line. Where's the depth shot? Going to be bouncing forward. Only Memento and Flaxish caught out by the shockwave. It's simply not enough. Hiku sidesteps the mystic shot as Knight is pinned against the wall. Satorius's GA gets popped. He'll spawn in the middle of five Giants members. Body slams over the wall into the waiting hands of Knight and the dredge line curved around the corner. Flaxish pulls off his best Angelina Jolie to connect with the curved bullet and Giants without Baron, find two kills. And this is why we always get such long games between these two teams, quick shot, because it is just one team getting an advantage and then that advantage being handed straight back over. Giants' composition is all about being able to find those 5v5 fights. It is all about forcing a big exchange. And when OG group up to try and force down a mid-tier one turret, you're just asking Giants to start a fight with you. <laughs> Giants responded. <laughs> yes, they did. They said, a letter received and we will comply. We uh, accept your challenge. So just look, look, look. So you can see, like, they have good vision setup around the top half of the map, but they have no vision control around the bottom. And Origin, they just don't respect the engaged power of Giants' composition and how great it is at being able to team fight. Look at Tabs, he can't offer anything in this exchange because they've already lost their jungler. It was just Origin not showing respect, not showing res restraint. They were riding off the high of the Baron. Yeah. They're riding off the fact that, hey, we got a great pick, we want to fight, let's go. 
And then it was like Giants saying no, hammer yeah. to the face. Yep, definitely being or hit anchor, rather. by the gigantic anchor of Flexish. Peke was the target of the uh, initiation, and Giants, they've at least thwarted the Baron buff. It's got another 10 seconds, so Origin can't do anything more with it. Every time I look at the minimap, it feels like Giants' uh, side wave pressure is a little better. You can see on the bottom, Knight was able to, you know, just usher along that bottom wave. It's going to start getting some chip damage on the tower. If we look at Knight's build, he hasn't gone for sort of that Lich Bane Ooh. movement speed style build, but Ludens will help out. I like the build. Yeah. Um, very aggro. I feel like he should have gone for a little earlier with the uh, Zonyas, perhaps, that he has something defensive in the event that Satoris is able to get a flank off. But regardless, it's very heavy in terms of wave clear, very heavy in terms of damage. Very likely to go towards a death cap next. But this is what Giants uh, can now look to do. They just gradually, they push up one lane, then they make a movement towards the other. They're always trying to have a numbers advantage to get this chip damage down onto the tower. And of course, because Giants have had some pretty good jungle control as far as wards, it's, it's, this is safe. Yeah. They had the wave pushed out bottom, they had vision on the Origin members. Giants just take the lead. Now, nobody's dealt with that big wave in the top. Yes. And this is the problem. This is why Giants can't continue their push, because when you're only playing around two lanes, uh, you have Orianna, who can mainly just hold on to one, and Gragas can be the main wave clear of the other, and you just have Syncroft and Tabs and Peke just sort of rotate between the two, and that provides more than enough wave clear. And they're not confident enough to be able to go for a dive at this point in the game. So Giants, they have to back off. They need to have all three lanes pushing in, force OG to split up among all three of them, and that is then how it becomes easier for Giants to be able to push. It's a multi-stage process. Yes. Um, that's what we're going to be looking at. We saw that gold graph a second ago. Obviously, Giants had a couple thousand gold in the lead. They gave away a few kills and, and, and lost the Baron. But See, we're now we're at the mid game for a Giants Origin. Because yes. It's 35 minutes. Yes, correct. <laughs> right? No, I'll, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. I mean, it is, uh, it is redefining the stats because of the context of the two teams playing. Yes. You have to, you have to bear that in mind. Origin. The first 10 minutes is the soothing, tranquil, relaxing stage. Then the early game begins. And then now we've approached the mid game. Now it's the three items. This is where things really start to get spicy. Yeah. We hope. Um, I oh, it will, Trevor. I it predicted, will. I predicted a 55 minute game one, right? Yes, you did. And I got a feeling that tonight's going to be a long night. And we'll see if uh, Origin and Giants agree. Because. Uh, as it stands, Baron's up in a minute. Elder Dragon will be up in about three-ish minutes, I think. Um, couldn't tell when that last ocean was secured. Can't remember, rather. And uh, both of these teams have shown a willingness to fight around those objectives. And now we want them to fight more. Yes. Um, Blood is the name of the game. Well, it's not the name. It's actually League of Legends. But what we want to see more of is just these two teams going at it really fighting for that spot, trying to prove to the world that we are still deserving of the LCS. Yes, that is what I need to see from Giants. They have significantly more tools to make that work. Their initiation should be simpler. And we can rely on Nautilus to find some CC and then hopefully have HeQ follow up with that chain of corruption. He's got a lot of damage to put out. Infinity Edge, Play the Rune King, Hurricane, Dominic Extra Guards as well. Just tons and tons of damage being built up, but it's going to be Vision, it's going to be Baron, the objective, it's 10 seconds till it spawns. But again, look at the sideways, you can see the top lane's actually pushing in favor of Origin. Origin also have push up through mid, and they've got a big stacking minion wave down the bottom lane, so Giants, at the moment, struggling to make anything happen because they just don't have good control over their side lanes. Origin want to peel and fight, kite and fight, back away, use that disengage. It requires complexity, it requires not getting caught. Synchrov has already been used. The Wild Goat has knocked him up. ex the captain, is the target. The Chaos Storm, one more tick. That will take him out. It's a support for a jungler, though. His Memento is already dead. So Taurus is able to body slam away from that anchor. One for one, but Giants lose arguably a more crucial member of the team. The important thing is, for Origin, is they, while they did only lose their support, Giants will gain absolutely nothing off the back of this because Origin still have all their wave clear and Origin, they're going for another fight. Oh, where are they going? So Taurus is teleporting in. He's got that GA available. Hustlin's running through the river. And Origin decides to back away. There was a lot of calls, a lot of yelling on stage. Go, go, go. And unfortunately, Origin 
Now we have to yell no, no, no. Very ambitious move from Origin. They had such a big minion wave down the bottom, such a big minion wave up in the top, and they should have just waited for Giants to go and answer those waves and then look to try and take the mid turret. Overall, it still results in an objective going in their favor. However, it could have been much easier and it wouldn't have cost them their teleport. Yeah, definitely not. If you look at the mini map, you can see those waves that Vedius is highlighting. And that was Synchro just getting caught out by that uh, 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 dredge line. The thing for Giants here is if they win this fight uh, through a significant numbers advantage, they can very swiftly just rotate that into a Baron, right? And that's the goal here for Giants. But because they only are able to get themselves one kill and they lose the main guy that is designed into taking that Baron down, they cannot commit to that objective. And yeah. the best that they can hope for is to get a vision, which they've now lost because Giants, they had to go and answer all the sideways that they weren't going Well, listen, listen, it's three towers to three, okay? We're 40 minutes in. We're now starting the climb towards late game. And, and this is where things get interesting because there is simply, there, there's no more room for, for error when you get caught out of the stage in the game because the towers will die very quickly. Well, they will. will be the next focus in Origin, they're the ones with Baron control. All of a sudden, thanks to those few minutes of play and the waves pushing in their favor. Let's take a look at oh. the top lane. Nahuun gets caught out. That was a flash engage from Giants. They've got the man in the mid lane before Nahuun can even get his shockwave out. Again, just overstepping Origin a little too eager. Oh dear, oh dear, Nahuun. You going down is one of the worst things that could have happened. You're the primary wave clear. This time, Giants, they do have a pushing wave down bot. And he, he's just soloing out the Elder Drake. I don't know if he can do this. He's going to try regardless on Origin. They're furiously pinging down onto that Baron. Can they get there to stop it? Syncrop and Tabs looking for Flaxish. He's got a GA available. Redemption will buy some time. Tabs is spamming out auto after auto, aggressively shifting forward. EQ with all the damage and lifesteal. He's gonna go for the Elder and it's secured by Giants. Team fight damage is the buff. And now the Baron has been started for Origin. Giants, they wanna answer. Can Giants stop it? I keep asking these questions. We'll find out in a moment. Origin have been able to been interrupted. The teleport alone from Giants has stopped Syncroft and the Origin squad, but now Giants are on the Purple Worm. Origin, they want to try and stop this. The Baron, it's about to die. This could be the game-defining play picked up by Giants. They have Elder, they have Baron. Syncroft wall plants and Origin run away. Giants secure themselves the Baron, secure themselves the Elder Dragon, and are in full control of the game. And this all comes from a pick onto Nahum. The mid laner for Origin going down opens up the map entirely for Giants. They didn't care about the side wave pressure because one of the core damage dealers of this Origin lineup disappears. That shockwave is no longer relevant. And this is the go sign for Giants to say, we're now going to take control of this game. Let's see them do it, right? Because Giants' proactive plays have been a little bit few and far between. Yeah. And as we've already alluded to a, a few times, you know, Giants have been happy enough to wait for Origin to kind of overextend and then engage. But with Baron this time around, with Waves maybe somewhat in their favor, there's a top and a mid in a turret to focus, and I think that's where we're going to head. Towards. Okay, so what you do here is you send Flaxish. Oh, he doesn't have teleport, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, but. What you want in your bottom lane, I'm just going to very quickly check. It is very slowly pushing in their favor. So you have the slow push building up for Giants in the bottom lane. You want to wait for that to start hitting the turret. Never mind, it's going to get cleared out from the Ezreal. Uh, so Giants, they need to send someone down to have that bottom lane pushing. And they then want to start rotating between the three lanes. You can keep Knight in the mid lane. He has enough wave clear to be able to just clear out the minions and keep the push on. Grouping up as five can work, but there is an element of risk because you're now just grouping up for a shockwave and you're, you have enough wave clear on the rest of your team to stop any other threat from anywhere else. Yeah, I think it's so important. That shockwave could be game changing or it could only really catch Flaxish. That was simply not good enough. Nahuun is putting on his best Yamcha impersonation because he's not doing the damage. Giants have broken open the base of Origin. They're going to set their sights on an inhibitor. Satorius, Synchrov, Nahuun, look how low they've gone. Giants have opened the base within two minutes of that Baron. Uh, I... 
Very questionable as to why Nahian would use his ultimate to wave clear. That was the that was the one tool that you had to zone, to scare giants away. And when you have all five members grouping up in that mid lane point, sure, there's always that risk of a dive, but you have a Gragas, you have the disengage ultimate. If they go for the dive, there's always the element to be able to turn it around. But again, with that damage dealing of ultimate just disappearing off the map, the giants basically now have a go signal that say, we have nothing to be afraid of, let us begin the dive. Just like the gold lead, look at the dive. <laughs> um, Origin falling further and further behind. They got that first Baron, there was like, potential, there was some hope for them to take control of the game. And it all fizzled. Gonna, I'm gonna use another DBZ reference. Go. I, I, I might be wrong with who used it, but... Okay. The solar flare? Yeah. Was that Krillin? That is Krillin. It never really did a lot. <laughs> And that's what it feels like the Shockwave is. <laughs> it just, it's not having the impact for Origin. And, you know, I, I wonder if it isn't because of the complexity of the setup, right? It is so difficult to get a great Shockwave when there's not I mean, a lot of other hard CC or hard setup. Yes, you can use Kha'Zix or Gragas, but... In, in Nation's defense, even if he used a Solar Flare onto all five members of Giants, when they have an Elder Drake and a Baron and they have a pretty sizable gold lead, they can just keep walking and throw their abilities blindly anyway. Remember, they just they just throw their keyboard at the floor, and as long as some of the ultimates force Origin back, then Giants get themselves an, a tower, right? Yep. The reason why I was very critical of it is because I felt that it was the one condition the Origin had to be able to at least defend that turn, to try. But it left it open, and now our Giants, they're sending their sights on another one. They are indeed. Flaxius is going to come up to play the front line. The tower is dropped in one single wave as the Baron expires. Just a little above average for the Baron power play for Giants and Memento. He's going to safeguard to the back line. Flaxius will use that anchor to pull himself to safety, and the inhibitors, the focus, super slowly pouring into the base. Exactly that, Quick Shot. They're just using the minions in order to gradually take down this inhibitor. Or someone from Origin has to go and deal with it. Otherwise, the Nexus turrets go down, which results in Giants very slowly, very calmly, not needing to try and force anything, being able to take themselves the second inhibitor. Look at the assists for the Giants members. Five assists, four assists, four, like, the majority of your team has been involved in the majority of the kills. It was a slow laning phase. Giants were comfortable in the mid to late game. And you can see why. They're not under a lot of threat yet. It's, it's very safe. It's very controlled. But it's likely going to result a win. Satorius comes in from the side lane and Chain of Corruption is spread in. Nahun is locked up under the tower, but there's no real threat from Giants. Satorius did a good job of disengaging. Stop, anchor time, Flaxish yells, and he dredges his way out, one and two. Even gets a redemption for good measure. Huston's just like, I got you, bro. I I'll heal you up. I no, do hear I you, bro. I, yeah. I, I hear you, bro, and I'm gonna I very swiftly move away from you. Yeah. Now, Giants, they've decided to back off. They've decided to say, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm now going to spend my gold. Complete my pur uh, purposes, purchases. <laughs> Look, you're making me lose the ability to use words now. Let's recollect ourselves. That's awkward considering your day job. I know, right? <laughs> Giants have a lot of control, funnily enough. That's what happens when you're able to take down two inhibitors. The top lane inhibitor will be respawning soon, but the bottom one has been freshly taken. So what you want is your chance. Flagsish needs to go bottom lane. He needs to be pushing that minion wave in. He has his teleport available. The rest of Giants, they can just slowly start chipping away on that top lane inhibitor, and you just send Knight mid to wave pit. He'll rotate from mid to top, and they'll just keep making that movement. They'll go from mid to top, mid to top, and eventually they should be able to net themselves another inhibitor because at least one or two people have to do with Flagsish walking those super minions in in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, Baron is on the cards as well, so Giants, they have a very easy game plan. The worst thing they can do is just try and force a 5v5 fight. Use the map. That's what we want to see from Giants. Um, I'm looking at the vision setup. It feels like another Baron might be the option here. Because, of course, if Origin leave the base to contest Baron, then Supers kill the base, and if Origin stick in their base, then Giants get Baron. I mean, it's like win-win, low risk here for Giants. But they have to have mid lane control in order to do it. Uh, the problem is, 
Ooh, Satorius. All right, he's going to take some damage. Knight kind of pulling that death ray a little early. It's not the death star, my friend. You're not going to pop a Satorius that quickly. So remember the bottom lane we were talking about earlier on. Giants, this is all they need to do. This is why they don't need to force a fight, because at this point in the game, there's a possibility of Origin being able to win it. So all you do is you use the minions, you use the map. And now look, look at how split up Origin are. It frees open the Baron for Giants. It absolutely does. The Nexus turrets are being defended by Satorius. True Shot Barrage only going to help Giants out. The rest of Origin, peel away, and Giants, they threaten well enough. Peel away at the right time and secure an uncontested Baron. Yes, Very smart map play. Very uncontested. One could one could say at no cost, arguably. Well, uh, it did cost quite a few wards. <laughs> it did. Setup time. Yep. Mana. Yep. <laughs> it was opportunity costs for that Baron. Really. There yes. certainly was. Quick but shot. Giants don't care because they got the Baron. And they now have three minutes to knock over the respawn inhibitor in the top lane. And the inhibitor tower in the mid lane. This is League of Legends by the numbers. Every tower, every inhib, it must go, go, go. And now with six minutes left on your prediction, uh, Giants, they're looking to close out the game. Uh, with this sort of gold lead, with this sort of item lead as well, they still have to respect that big shockwave on Nate. If that prediction is right, it is very bittersweet. <laughs> <laughs> very bittersweet indeed. Tabs at complete build here with that Triforce Merc Scimitar. Neuromana completed, Synchrov and Sartorius trying to be as threatening as they can on the front line, both with GAs available. Sartorius goes in with a body slam, but that was simply not enough. The explosive cast not going to knock anyone away. The engage not there, now Synchrov gets chunked down. The exhaust buying a lot of time for Giants. Ooh. Memento in the shockwave, that's going to be pulling the rest of Giants deeper. Nahun loses his life, the inhibitor falls, and Giants turn their attention to the supers in the bottom lane. An army of Winions is pouring into the base. The anchor connects with Xpeka and Giants. Look at the first Nexus turret on a killing spree for Knights as Peke goes down. Sartorius is running for his life. The super minions pouring in, five minutes short of my prediction, Giants pick up the first game and it's best of five. 50 minutes was the game time for Giants. Early on, poor management of side raves did make things a little bit difficult. They didn't quite find the big 5v5 fights that they wanted to very quickly transition that into, say, a Baron. Uh, but eventually they were able to find the Elder Drake, turn that into a Baron themselves. And then that was more than enough to be able to close out the game. And the big thing for me is for Origin, we're not seeing enough from them. We're just seeing five players play by themselves, not communicating, not understanding where they can get themselves the lead. And beside that one big pick around the river, we didn't really see Origin do anything else. No, we really didn't. And I think this is a worrying sign. Um, Giants as a team, they had an even laning phase. They played reactive for 30 odd minutes because they didn't need to. There was no pressure from Origin applied to them. Now, let's also be fair, Giants were not necessarily applying a huge amount of pressure. Well, I would argue they applied a lot more, especially in the early game, thinking about the comparison with the amount of time Synchroth was trying to set up Deep Vision and yep. try and control the enemy jungle versus Memento, who is always in the enemy jungle, always trying to, to try and control the map. And At as least a result, sometimes costing his team uh, by getting caught out. Yeah, I mean, at least it was giving information, right? It was, and, yes. and it didn't necessarily result in, in maybe more than that, but information wins games. That is why the sword is uh, deadlier. No, the pen is deadlier than the sword. Damn it! I messed that one up. Anyways, Giants take a win and get a great start in the series. For more, the guys are ready to break down game one. Take it away. Thank you, Quickshot. Uh, looking at the series, I think very back and forth, I'd say maybe surprisingly back and forth if you were a believer in Giants, but 50 minute game comes out, Giants are mm -hmm. able to take it in the end, and it is definitely a good start for Giants in the series. I mean, that's the thing, I just noted down here in the end, it doesn't actually matter how you win in a series like this. It's, it's right I can actually confirm, uh, how you win, not important. I know, I had to run that risk. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you guys to know, after a 50 minute game, there is not much else written down on hey, this paper, are. you know? It's like, your paper? It's like, yeah, they're in the mind palace. It's just, I just wrote it down, how you win <laughs> is not important. All right, yeah, so, you need your analysis. So here's, uh, I need to read this. So, so yeah, again, what I basically wrote here in a, in a very quick bullet point is, how you win is not very important. The fact you do win is important in a game like this because no one cares if it's beautiful, if it's sick macro. 
People just care, you know, about who actually wins this BU5. Giants, I never felt like they were really under pressure on, except for like one moment where they lost the Baron and then that bounced back pretty quickly. Pretty kind of intense battle survival. Makes sense that all that matters is that you survive in the end, but let's take a chance to look at some of those, that first place specifically around the top lane where Giants got pretty comfortable off the start for some uh, executional errors on the side of OG. Yeah, Flaxish just pulling ahead of Satorius here, you know, puts him out of turret range and then Takes the walk, pops the E, the Riptide makes a difference. Just individual outplay from Flaxish. Really good play by play there, Mitch, as well. I mean, there's not much to analyze because a wise man once told me it doesn't matter how you survive the 1v2 dive. The matter, what matters is that you survive no, the 1v2 no, read dive. The line, read the line. How you survive 1v2 dive, not important. There you go. All right. All right, gentlemen. Wonderful uh, insight as always. I like this new strategy for analyst does. It makes my life easier. Me so, taking notes I, yeah. and reading my notes? Perfect. I agree. I know. It, the result is all that matters. It's not how you get there is what I've <laughs> learned. All right. So let's then move our attention to the mid lane. Uh, Giants, I feel like this was one of the big fights for them. They did kind of start that ball rolling. Yeah, this is after they lost that Baron, but then quickly, you know, they're able to kind of figure out what's the next move for us. And this was actually a really weird situation where Taps was running towards the team, yet the team was taking the mini wave to the tower. Like Without the AD carry, yeah. Without the AD carry. They look at the tower and go like, wait a minute, we're missing someone here. How do we take this turret? And then also, they collectively wondered where could the enemy team be? We have a massive wave in the top lane. No, they're not there. Mm -hmm. We have a few wards in the enemy jungle. No, they're also not there. We're about to hit mid lane turret with four people. Uh, our AD carry, no, four people. Our AD carry is like oh, right, right. in base. Uh, where could they be? Turns out they were in the brush right next to mid lane, camping, waiting for an engage. And that's what Giants do. They definitely make decisive plays. They do. They do, and uh, the fact they were actually down on the bottom side was really surprising because we were talking about the play before it happened. Be like, why are they near the enemy red buff right here? No one's going to go bot lane from Origin. And they were like, but wait, they're running to mid now. So Origin clearly didn't expect him to be there. And yeah. then it was a really good engage from Flashes. He had a few of those one, uh, those ones here with the Nautilus. Uh, key Flash one later as well, where he flashes in. Pekka and Nehun died as well. So overall, like the Nautilus paid off big time. And Giants got to go full late game with the victor. And Knight could actually carry in the end. Well, I'm interested if... With that risky game, but kind of camping an enemy red, running mid, if Tabs had been there, would that have gone against them at all? Would they have they wasted any time kind of committing to being an enemy jungle and looking for that flank? Or does it just balance out? Is that the right play in this circumstance, regardless of the result in the end? I think they would have lost tower and then taken an even five on five. Obviously, you can just win the five on five still, but the fact it was... Origin not being able to push tower and then Origin not having the AD carry for the start of a fight made the play really successful for Giants. If you're aware of your opponent coming, then you can obviously just send in the Gragas first, use the Polymorph offensively, you get more value out of Xpeke who then doesn't have to flash and ulti himself to keep himself alive. Meanwhile, as well as actually hitting Qs instead of missing them, then you have an entirely different fight. However, Giants in that position, if you get sieged on safely in a full Vision 5, you give that option to Origin. So to surprise them with a flank was the right call. And these guys seem to be more willing to pull the trigger. Whereas Origin, they're like, the only communication seems to be like, let's get this turret and not be like, hmm, I wonder what our opponents are going to do against our move. Yeah, and then when we look towards the later game, the communication also felt like, hey, let's kill this guy, not, hey, let's like focus on the map, let's look for the next objective. As we look at our final replay here, we can see OG maybe a little too focused on trying to find a kill here around the Baron Pit. And while they're hungry for Flaxus, you can see the pings down onto that Elder Dragon. I feel like whenever they try to kill Flaxus, everything just went wrong for Origin. Kiku has been soloing the Elder Drake, uh, gets it in the end. And this one, Origin are like, let's start Baron, because they're, they're down doing Elder Drake. It doesn't really work when you start the Baron. When the Drake actually dies, the other team will walk in and stop you, and now they just have an Elder Drake. Yeah, they, and they can't also make use of their tank. Their tank is flanking from the from the side that doesn't need any defense, so they're just going all, going in for kind of a haphazard steal, but suddenly that Nasher gets bursted at 3k. That is, again, it's a minor thing, but that Nasher went down slowly to 3,000 or 2.5k health, and then it immediately disappeared. It's because Giants were probably communicating at 2.5k, mm -hmm. everybody burst, and then it doesn't matter whether you smite early or late, if you have control over an arbitrary number at which you can burst the Baron, you are no longer playing a 50-50. If you wait for it to go down in smite range, then you're playing a 50-50. I just think we saw in this game kind of what we and I feel like most people expected. Giants, without being a perfect team, is better than Origin at most stages of the game. Like yeah. early game, Lulu was first picked and then lost lane, lost first tower at 15 minutes and lost the top tower right after as well in 2v2s. So that first pick is obviously completely useless then, if, if that's the, the result of it. And while Giants obviously didn't lose that Baron, they bounced back really quickly and they were just always a step ahead. 
of origin in, yeah. in this game. That's also what I had in my notes, but I forgot them. And they're in your head, right? They're you got them. Got them locked down. Well, while Crepo locks down his notes, whatever Deficio just said, neither team can afford a loss here in this series. We'll see if Origin can come back in game two, and that is right around the corner. This is going to be a very, very tough series mentally. Both of these teams are fighting for not just their spot, but an opportunity to still have their spot. Here comes Flaxi, she's in trouble. Satorius and Sinkov going under the tower. Is this a reply? First oh. blood! Sinkov is blocked, cancels the auto, and Flaxi gets first blood. That means Tabs is in trouble. Here comes Satorius. Origin, have they bitten off more than they can chew? That's a kill. The super minions pouring in. Five minutes short of my prediction. Giants pick up the first game in this best of five.